Welcome back to Chelsea, where we are unironically, of course, trying to get Olivier Giroud, aged 37, the Golden Boot Award in the Premier League. Five goals in six games, that seems really impressive, until you actually look at the Premier League Golden Boot Award and realise that Veghorst and NDIA have six goals in six games. Haaland, Isaac, Calvert-Lewin, Odegaard also have five goals in six. There's lots of goals being scored in this FM beta. I mean, I don't want to call it prematurely, but I think Giroud will outscore Haaland this year. Okay, yeah, that is a ridiculous statement. Welcome back to Stamford Bridge, where today we have a live comm doubleheader, Manchester United away, Liverpool at home, two massive tests for us. Let's run the intro and catch up on what's happened in the last month or so. Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to episode number two of our Chelsea Let's Play here in the FM24 beta. I hope you guys have been enjoying this game as much as I have. Thank you so much for the support on the video earlier on today, as well as the video that went up yesterday. If this is your first time tuning into this series, you've clicked on episode two. Go watch the previous ones. I feel like that's logical. Now, of course, last episode, we took on Tottenham to open the season. An unconvincing 2-1 win. In the game since we were last here, we've had to play Arsenal, Newcastle, Aston Villa. All very good teams. Oh, and yeah, we did also play Wolverhampton Wanderers. In fact, this was the second game of the season. Olivier Giroud, I mean, you're going to get to see what he's all about here. Heading in Chilwell's cross there to make it 1-0. We then got a second goal shortly after. Little shortly worked routine to Sterling. Love that. Love the new set pieces. And while we did make it 3-0 not long later, it's going to feel a bit like deja vu as the ball finds its way into the box. Giroud was there to score. Sadly, we didn't manage to hold on to a clean sheet in that game, but nevertheless, a good little result. Sadly, we couldn't maintain the form going into the next game. Arsenal away from home. A few years ago, I would have said this wasn't the most difficult game in Football Manager. Arsenal are actually quite good now, aren't they? And to be honest, they won 2-1. They deserve to win 2-1. We did take the lead in this game. It was another set piece. Chilwell with the cross in. It was partially clear. Giroud's shot deflected. Colwell bundled it in for his first goal of the season. From there, though, didn't really go to plan. A goal up at halftime. It didn't maintain that for long. Saka ghosting inside. Chilwell out of position. He made it 1-1. And then Arsenal got their own little set piece. Revenge. Reese Nelson whipping the ball in. We didn't deal with it. No one closed down Odegaard. Dean Anderson couldn't get close to that. We did also manage to beat Birmingham 6-0 in the Carabao Cup. I'm not going to show all six goals. I'm not flexing on Birmingham. Just that goal there. Kai Havertz, what a finish. So into the month of September we went and we kicked things off with a really good win. 5-1 against Aston Villa. Ansu Fati scored. Sadly, he then went on to get injured. And in fact, he's missed basically the last month of football. He's only played three Premier League games of the first six. Just as a little reminder, if he plays 30 games in the Premier League this season and we finish in the top four... I owe Barcelona money, so in some ways this injury is a blessing. Newcastle United was up next, a tricky game, again, away from home, but we got an early goal. Mudrick winning the ball well, Madueke at the back post. Madueke got, I think, a hat-trick and an assist in the game against Birmingham City. Had a great start to the season. Nice to see him get on the score sheet in the Premier League. Sadly, Carrasco scored for Newcastle minutes later, and it remained 1-1 going into the second half, where the home side Newcastle broke the deadlock, and having held on for a while, we'd weathered a storm, we couldn't weather it for much longer. They were on top. We made some changes. We, we readapted. We overcame things. And Guller, I mean, you're going to see a pass here that was insane. He dinked it towards the Segundo Volante, Mason Mount, who rescued us a point. Obviously, we are playing with a Segundo Volante. I mean, hear me out here. Segundo Volante on attack. And ironically, it might be Mason Mount's best role. I'm going to stick my neck out on the line and say that. We have in the most recent two games managed to get two great wins. Fulham, 3-0 win. First clean sheet in the Premier League. Took a while. And then most recently, we beat Everton 4-1. Nice to see loads and loads of goals going in for us would like us to be a bit better at the back. So the transfer window has slammed shut. I did make one final signing of the window. That man, Loran, 17 years old. Very, very good, exciting young Brazilian player. Ignore the fact that he's playing for the Flamengo first team with an average rating of 5.4. That is actually awful, isn't it? Look, ign we'll pretend that's not a thing. 17 years old, load of potential. Has got a few downsides worth being concerned about, but his current ability is immense. His potential is there. And if we look at things, we snapped him up for less than £10 million, pounds, which I I think is a bargain. So like I already mentioned, Giroud has been great to start the year. Other players though, surprise packages perhaps, Kai Havertz. Two goals in the Premier League, two goals in the Carabao Cup. The 24-year-old is looking good to the point where he's now attracting interest 
from Manchester United. I don't really intend on selling him. I feel like he's a pretty good fit for our system. And actually, speaking of our system, I have been tinkering things, you know, first few games of the new match engine, trying to figure some stuff out. And this is what I've landed on. Giroud, now a target forward. Yesterday, we played him as a pressing forward against Tottenham. I'm not entirely sure what I was thinking. I mean, he's not awful at it. But when we look at him as a target forward, this suits him so much better. And with this change in role to a slightly more supportive role, I have pushed Nkunku, the advanced playmaker, into the attacking duty so he will get further forward. Elsewhere, we have just slowed things down a little bit. Chilwell, no longer a wing back on attack. We were getting caught out at the back a little bit. Instruction wise as well, I have just lowered the tempo and the directness of our passing. Given the fact that we are using a few roles like the Segundo Volante, an inverted wing back that perhaps need a little bit of time to get in position, with us rushing the ball up the pitch, they were never really getting into the positions I wanted them to get into. Which, I mean, so far we've seen with Mason Mount's goal against Newcastle, the Segundo Volante with these small changes is getting into the final third and actually contributing quite a lot. If we just look at injury history as well, we are currently wrestling with a fair few injuries. Nine injuries in the month of September. The most notable, perhaps, Thiago Silva. Very, very unhappy I didn't sell him to Arsenal, to the point where he was really kicking up a stink. You can see he's now out for the next three weeks of injury, which is a shame. Only silver lining in all of this is that Benoit Badiashile is back from injury, and to be honest, I feel like him and Joe Gomez, they're the dream duo. I mean, we'll use that term loosely. I think these two are our best centre-back pairings. Of course, we do have Cole will we do have chalaba and we also have someone else yeah uh, kilabali didn't get sold I, I agreed a deal with juventus and then he turned down their contract offer yeah i really did try to get rid of him anyway we have got two games coming up today we're going to hop into the first of those which is this one here against manchester united i mentioned the tiago silva injury and sufati injured too malo gusto and kovacic coming back from injury just to be aware of but in terms of the overall starting 11 in spite of fatty's injury we are in a really good spot it's our near best 11 as far as i'm concerned defensively i have still got some question marks but from an offensive point of view as i suppose is indicated by the sea of green average ratings for the last five games We've looked good. Manchester United today, at the moment in sixth. We are currently two points ahead of them in third. This is going to be a test. I'm not sure how Manchester United fans are going to feel about the fact that De Gea is still at the back for them. He is between the sticks in goal. They have got a good little team. They've got Turan up front in this universe. As for our team, I'm looking at the number nine, Olivier Giroud, our top goal scorer, hoping he's going to be in sensational form yet again today. 15 minutes into this game, we are yet to have a shot. Manchester United have had a couple, but we have had 64, 65% of the ball. I mean, possession doesn't win you football matches. Defence wins championships. And our defending there was shocking. It's the first real meaningful highlight of the game here. Manchester United carving us open through the middle. Casado is meant to be the left centre mid in the kind of defensive mid department. He went walkies and... We find ourselves a goal down. I kind of alluded to it earlier. Having played Newcastle and Arsenal away and Aston Villa and taken on Manchester United and Liverpool today, we've actually had some really difficult games to start the season. This game here, anything but winnable. Based on what I'm seeing here, we look like we've got our backs against the wall somewhat. We actually start off this game by having a load of possession. That number has swung back towards Manchester United as this half has gone on. Having got their noses ahead, they've kind of rocked us a little bit. We might need a moment of magic. Perhaps Raheem the Dream can deal here. He whips it in and he has dealt it here. He's given us... Uh, what has he? Is a gift. Giroud scores another. I did question if Raheem Sterling was going to be worth the £350,000 a week he's on. And whilst I don't know if he's necessarily proven or disproven it yet, balls like that into the box that find Giroud's forehead are going to convince me rather quickly he's worth every penny. It does feel slightly wrong to be using a winger and a target forward in the Premier League. I don't know. It feels very retro and old school, but if it works, it works. Oh my word. And Kunku hits his free kick. De Gea tips it over. Okay, we're set up for the corner routine. I can tell you which routine we're about to do here. We are going to go short to Reese James. He's going to lay it back to Nkunku, who tries to pick out Madueke. Not exactly the most inspiring of set pieces routines there. We'll pretend that didn't happen. Oh god, now they've got a corner. Look, we should probably just put it in the box more, shouldn't we? We've headed this one away from danger, but Turam, the goal scorer for Manchester United, there to mop up the pieces. Fernandez now looking to bring the ball forward, perhaps, although I feel like we're doing quite a good job of getting into our defensive shape here. Now, question, can we win back the ball? Pelistri on this near side, the Uruguayan to the byline, whips it in, it's looping, it's Rashford! 
It's 2-1. I don't want to throw anyone under the bus. Uh, Dean Henderson, mate, you do realise we're playing your former club here. You're, like, you're in goal, meant to be doing something magical for us. Being at his near post, can I blame him? I'm going to blame him. It's probably completely irrational. I will admit it, when you look at the stats at half-time in this game, it's 2-1 to Manchester United. They probably do deserve to be ahead. Besides the goal that we scored... We've really not done anything. Madueke's on a 6.3 rating with a bucking, and Kunku's been poor. Casado ends up, I'm going to make halftime changes. So the change I think I'm going to make here, this might prove unpopular. I am going to bring in Kai Havertz, an advanced playmaker, moving Kunku as an inside forward onto the left-hand side. And elsewhere, Fernandez not loved you today. I'm bringing in Mason Mount. I'm bringing on Mason Mount and Kai Havertz at Old Trafford at half time to win me a game for Chelsea in 2023. Feels wrong on so many levels. That said, they are two players who have won games for us on occasion this year. I need them to do it again here as we are going to go for our short set piece routine yet again. And Kunku, well, he's scared of the goal apparently. He's running a very long way and then he shoots like that. I mean... I need a new set piece, coach, I think. Goal kick for Manchester United. At least they're on the back foot a little bit to start this half, by which I mean they're taking goal kicks. We barely had any shots in the first half. And, well, we're maybe going to be able to create something here because we've won the ball in a great area. Casado, of course, got two goals against Tottenham. Hasn't scored since, I thought, for a second. He was about to get his third of the season. Lissandro Martinez lays it forward to Casemiro again. We are looking to press. We are looking to harass and force an error. Manchester United really are trying to play the ball out from the back. I feel like it provides an opportunity for us to catch them in a dangerous area on the flip side though we are looking a little light at the back if they do beat the press and they have managed to do that bruno fernandez rashford shoots just wide of the post can we just discuss the shot that rashford did there by the way that has never happened in a previous football manager game shots like that it makes me feel warm and fuzzy watching the new match engine when new things happen maybe we can have some new stuff happen here casado mount wide chill well lovely build up plays you ruin the middle oh my word can I, can I claim goal of the season this early? It's not a stupendous long shot, but just Quiff's passing has found its way into the middle, and I absolutely loved it. Uh, Casado, little give and go with Raheem Sterling. Mason Mount turns, sees the space in the wide area. Chilwell puts it in. Giroud's on for a hat-trick. People laughed at me for signing Olivier Giroud. They're not laughing anymore. Okay, Casado hasn't exactly had the best game today. I think I'm going to take him off and bring in Chalaba to play the defensive midfielder role. Elsewhere, Nkunku has been largely disappointing. So Mudrick, on you come to do your runny stuff. That makes it sound like I want him to do a number two on the pitch. I want him to run up and down the line. To be clear, I think we all knew that. Okay, there is, what, six minutes left in this game? I'm going to go for some late encouragement. I want to believe we could get the win here at Old Trafford. This might be naive. This might be stupid. I'm going to tell the players to go more direct and distribute it to the flanks quickly. And on top of that, I'm going attacking. I want to win this game. We've got a late chance. Mason Mount to take the corner, whipping it back post. It goes over everyone. Joe Gomez is on his bike to keep it alive. He pulls it back. Mudrick goes down in a heap. VAR is checking it. It looked very soft in 3D. I feel like this shouldn't be given, but Football Manager is weird with stuff like this. Are we about to get a late penalty at Old Trafford? We are six minutes left. We've gone attacking, and now Giroud for the hat trick. Oh, he's actually got his hat trick. That was very anticlimactic. He took it so quickly. He just wanted to get it over and done with. It's 3-2. I don't want to get carried away prematurely here. Olivier Giroud may end up being the best signing I make in Football Manager all year. I've, I think I might have peaked early. Also, uh, <laughs> let's go back to being defensive. There's far too many players attacking now. Slow down the tempo, up the time wasting. Two and a half minutes. We can do this. Okay, can we do that? There's a highlight. There is a highlight. De Gea's gone forward. De Gea is at the back post. Don't do this, football manager. This would be ridiculous. McTominay's actually scored. I'm fuming. I'm so angry. It's 3-3. Free free. It's great content for YouTube, but my heart hurts. McTominay scored and my whole PC froze. It's broken my computer. I don't know what just happened. My whole PC froze for about a minute, but it's finished free free and I'm still angry. The minute of freeze time has not calmed me down. I thought for a second I was about to lose the recording. No one would have ever believed that this happened, but it did just happen. It's the lunchtime kickoff on a Saturday. I mean, there's no point in anyone watching the rest of the Premier League games because they're not going to be better than this one. I mean, Giroud's got a hat trick against Manchester United and we've still not won the game. Unbelievable. As if that game wasn't enough, I've now got Liverpool in eight days' time. I'm going to go try and calm myself down. In the meantime, and I should really draw attention to this, if Todd Bowley wants to put 200 million in the bank, that would be great because the big red number still exists here. 
and is still worrying me. I really didn't think I could grow to resent this man anymore. Uh, Killer Barley, not only did he turn down Juventus on deadline day, he's now out with a double hernia for a month and a half, which for a 32-year-old with 13 natural fitness probably spells the end of his career. I am still annoyed about the McTominay goal. I've got to try and mentally reset because today we are taking on Liverpool. It is a Sunday game and you can actually see the latest Premier League table here. Everton and Brentford are currently above us. If we don't win here, they will stay ahead of us. Everton, fourth in the Premier League. It's a beta. It's a beta. It's a beta. Let's all remind ourselves that. So some good news for us, actually. Fatty has passed a fitness test. So as a result, he is able to make the bench for today's game. Only available for 45 minutes. Good to have him back in the team. Madueke, when he plays great, he plays great. When he plays bad, he plays bad. Bad. I mean, you can see his recent form here. He needs to step it up today. Elsewhere in the team, Badia Schille. You know what? He's not 100% match fit. He didn't wow me in that last game. I feel like Colwell didn't necessarily put a foot wrong before I dropped him. So I'm going to bring him back into the starting 11 today. Team submitted, Team Talkton, at home against Liverpool. They've had the midweek distraction of European football. We've had eight days of rest. I want to back us to win this game. Here is their starting 11. Diaz, Gakpo, Jota, Ward Prowse. Ward Prowse is set pieces are going to be scary and they've got Jordan Henderson at defensive mid I miss him even if he did sack off all his morals and all that moral grandstanding he did which clearly he didn't really care about because he's gone and secured a load of money I'm really happy for you Jordan I hope it makes you happy the money you won. I bet you didn't think there'd be a come dine with me reference within two episodes of this series, but here we are. I mean, if you didn't think that would happen, probably new to the channel. Okay, halfway through this first half already. This time, it's Liverpool on the attack. We've got plenty of men behind the ball. We need to deal with things here, but Jota getting into a wide area. He pulls up. We managed to mop up the pieces with Colwell, although Modo Eke, I put him under the microscope. I criticised him. He gave the ball away in a crucial area. Liverpool have punished us. Liverpool as the away team here have had 67% of the ball and Madueke here I mean he just needed to get it away from danger ran into trouble Jota won the ball and with it Liverpool take the lead now I am slightly aware here that I am trying to play the ball out of the defense but we're struggling to have possession so with that in mind I'm gonna actually drop I think um Fernandez into a roaming playmaker role just to drop back to our defenders a little bit more and elsewhere I'm just gonna encourage us to play shorter at a slightly lower tempo they've got their noses ahead the worst thing I need right now is for Liverpool to grab a second they are gonna try and press us with their front three but given the fact they've not got a traditional number 10 I'd like to think that we two defensive mids we will be able to play out from that press that's what i'm gonna hope happens what would be great to happen here is an nkunku free kick i brought him in with knowing he had good set piece taking he's not shown it yet i mean he's getting he's hit the crossbar there i'll give him the benefit of the doubt i'm not really acknowledge it nkunku has not scored in six premier league games i signed him for 85 million pounds i need him to score a free kick or just score something soon okay two minutes left of this half madueke needs to make amends the number 11 lays it inside to sterling Giroud looking lively stretching the back line raheem the dream it's the sign netting. Half time of this game here, Liverpool 1-0 up. It's not quite been the classic of the game against Manchester United. This has been a more cagey affair. I'm not going to throw a water bottle, but my hands are going in my pocket, so I'm going to tell the players they've been terrible. We're supposed to be favourites. I don't know if that is technically true. I've, Liverpool are predicted to finish ahead of us in the league. If there is a small crumb of comfort to take, it is that after we made our tactical changes, we have managed to have significantly more of the ball. I suppose the downside is we're not necessarily getting it into the final third as much because we're having so much possession. I'm going to change our mindset to attacking. I think I am also going to change a couple of positions here. Casado and uh, Fernandez. I'm going to push them both forward here out of the defensive mid position. Elsewhere, I'm going to move James to play inverted wing back on attack. I want him getting into the midfield that little bit quicker. We are going to up the tempo, but we will maintain the short passing for now. Whilst I'm making those changes, there is a highlight playing out in the background. Is this football manager stringing me along or are we about to make something magical happen? Chilwell, ball in, Madueke... Forces an Alison Becker save. Raheem Sterling bringing the ball down this near side. Gives it forward to that target man Giroud. He holds it up for Nkunku and continues on his run. Madueke picks out Giroud. One on one. Can't finish it. Becker turns it wide. I don't know why I've called Alison Becker Becker there. It's like we're best mates. Uh, can confirm, not his friend. He doesn't know who I am. At least, I don't think he does. If he does... Hi, mate. And Kunku's been poor in this game. I'm going to bring in Kai Havertz. Mason Mount is going to come in for Fernandez as well. Raheem Sterling's been poor. I'm going to take him off. Ansu Fati, on you come to play out on the right-hand side. Palmy wants to take off Giroud. Palmy knows 
I don't really have a striking option to bring on here. I mean, Broya, I have. He's not even been called up for the Albania team in the latest set of international friendlies. So I don't think he's ready to come on here. Liverpool set piece, War Prowse over it. It's all my worst nightmares coming true. Jordan Henderson scored it. it. Oh no, he has. Nunes has scored it. Okay, that makes it slightly less bad. I do feel like we might need to work on our whole defending set pieces there. I mean, four players have gone for the ball and not Darwin Nunes is the man who's come away with it. Shocking. See, I'm annoyed about how bad this game's going, but I am also enjoying the fact the match engine looks much prettier with the new lighting. It does look nice. Sometimes it's a bit foggy, the match engine. I don't know if any of you have noticed that playing the beta. But all the new animations, the new lighting, it all does look very nice. I just wish we could do something with the nice graphics. Diaz is bringing it forward. Joe Gomez against his former club, mopping up the pieces. My number two gives it back to Henderson. Cole now with it. Playing out from the press nicely. And now can Chilwell make something happen? Madueke back to Colwell. I mean, this passing is lovely, lads. We do need to get it into the final third. Reese James playing in that midfield as an inverted wing back. Havertz has just been murdered by War Prow. Sorry, get the red. Show him the red card. They're down a man. I've got 15 minutes to make something happen. They're playing really narrow. Okay, if they're going to play really, really narrow, we are we are going to play really, really wide. Uh, Chilwell, James, uh, you guys can go forward. Let me cook. I'll be back in a moment. This does just look like I'm having a breakdown. I want to claim this method to this madness. It's just madness. I'll be honest. In possession, hit early crosses, focus the ball in the wide areas. We're going to go direct, higher tempo, and crosses floated. Float them to Giroud. Also, in transition, get it to the flanks. Throw it long, distribute it quickly. We're going to try and punish them. Bit of a shame the sending off couldn't happen sooner. When you look at the two formations of the two teams next to one another, it does look like a ridiculous game. Are we sure we're still playing football? I'm not entirely sure. We've got, what, eight minutes to try and get two goals here. Havertz chests it down, lays it wide to Chilwell. Both our wingbacks going to get forward. Ball floated. Giroud keeps it alive. Mason Mount skies it. I'm going to shout demand more. If in doubt, get shouty shouty. Oh, Simicast has got a free kick. Simicast forces a save out of Henderson. I mean, Ward Prowse isn't even on the pitch and I'm scared of their free kicks. They have got a corner as well here. I mean, I want to pretend that I'm not worried. I am panicking. I, I, I am, I'm, you know, I'm panicking. I could lose my job. We've got it away. Verge, Milner, James Milner. Darwin, they've scored Darwin Nunes. I should have signed him. We nearly signed him in the summer. I should have done it. I do kind of wish this episode had just ended after, you know, 92 minutes of the game at Old Trafford. It would have been a great episode. I just, I just feel sad. I'm fairly embarrassed. We lost 3-0. I think I'm justified in throwing a water bottle. The defence love it. The attackers are anxious, angry, and have no confidence. I think that sums us up perfectly. With that result there, we do actually drop down to sixth because it damaged our goal difference and Liverpool went above us. Elsewhere, West Ham drew against Man City. So at least Man City aren't running away with the Premier League yet. No one has an 100% record anymore. Oh, God, the players want to talk about the team. The team talk was too harsh. We lost 3-0 against 10 men. I'll make changes. I'll, I'll be a new person. That was productive. Emboldened. Does Casado even know what the word emboldened means? I hope so, because I'm not entirely sure. Okay, look, if we're being real, I mean, there's been nine goals today. So entertainment, 10 out of 10. Results, uh, 1 out of 10? I mean, the draw away from home against Old Trafford would feel great if it wasn't for the circumstances. Now, I did already allude to it. I do feel like we've had some fairly difficult games to start the season. Tottenham, Arsenal, Manchester United, Liverpool, Newcastle, Villa. There are some more easy games on the horizon. In terms of when we're going to come back, December. Brighton at home, Man City away. Why am I playing Man City away? Why do I think that's a good idea? I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know. If you do enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like on things. Check out the series playlist down in the description if you're a binge watcher from the future. I hope you enjoyed the action. Back with more tomorrow. I'll see you guys then. I'm out.